Hey guys, Katie Vibes here. Welcome or welcome back to my channel. So I'm going to be posting this on my main YouTube channel. Um, but I don't know why I keep saying main. I think the toy content one is my main channel. It's definitely where I'm going to be probably posting more. Um, who knows, that could change. But uh, I do know that it's definitely more of my main channel. But this is going to be my secondary channel where I post non-toy content. You're going to get crazy news, me talking about, you know, topics that people just genuinely typically don't want to talk about um you know whether that be abuse or you cheating how do you tell somebody how do you heal after you cheat and they leave you um i know i keep bringing up cheating probably like yeah does this girl just recently cheat no i'm just using these as examples i used to run a really support um really successful support blog is what i was trying to say not a really supportive support blog but it was supportive hey it was supportive on my end and on a slow day i would get five messages and that's like a really slow day so i was constantly getting new messages every day i closed it down because my dad had just died i went through a very dark period i was not taking any of my own advice i totally spiraled out of control i'll admit to that and um yeah i just i love doing it and i told people constantly i'm not a doctor i'm not a therapist and i haven't gone to school i'm no professional i am giving you advice as if you were my friend and you came up to me and asked this question in person and people told me all the time they really appreciated that they're like this is what i needed like i have so many friends i've told this to and all of them give me the really generic answer and i know it's not the answer that i need but i needed to actually hear it or you know everyone's giving the same advice and it wasn't working and you know their advice would be like oh just let it go just let it go and it's like well it's not just that easy as just letting it go right so anyways um yeah i just i really prided myself on on that support blog and i really loved it and i want to start doing that again um i started getting back into tumblr because that's actually where i had the support blog so i might start doing it there again since there's a free platform where people can access it easily they can create an account they don't have to set anything up they can literally just put in a username don't even have to set up their account and can just you know send a message if they need to kind of thing so i'll probably be doing that and i will be posting those videos here on this account i would tend to do um these kind of videos where i was talking and that would be my reply to their question but anyways um yes yeah, so you're gonna get content like this you're gonna get content about the news which is what this one's about you're gonna get things um me reviewing things i made a huge list of restaurants i want to try out places i want to try out museums like really cool events here in arizona um i just want to start trying different things and doing different things and letting you guys know how it goes and showing you from the inside what it looks like and all that kind of good stuff so you can expect a lot of stuff from me in the upcoming weeks and i'm very very excited for that so yeah um, this unfortunately is not a happy video. This is actually something really tragic that happened that really makes my blood boil for multiple reasons. I'll get more into my own opinion towards the end of this. Uh, right now I just want to give you the facts or the facts as they are being presented online at this current moment. So this is something that is definitely still ongoing. It's definitely something that happened recently. Um, I think the last like big event, if you will, happened on just November 9th, which it's November 13th, so just a few days ago. This is about Daniel Williams. He was a 22-year-old inmate in Alabama at the Staten Correctional Facility. And uh, he was, as quoted by uh, the news outlet I got this from, tied up, beaten, and rented out just 14 days before being released. He is a father of two young children. He was about to be released. He was about to be able to be a father. He was be able to be able to fix his mistakes and, and move on and grow up 22 years old making mistakes yeah but we all made mistakes when we were younger and he had the opportunity to fix those mistakes but he wasn't given that opportunity because two weeks before he got to go home to see his family he was beaten and tortured and he died he was killed um, he was found on October 22nd. He was found unresponsive and he was sent to the hospital. Now, again, this was October 22nd. Keep that date in your mind and well, I'll tell you why. His parents were notified on October 25th. So on the 22nd, he was found. And it was clear he was in critical condition, right? Now, it doesn't say that it was clear he was found in critical condition, but... Oh, everything you're going to hear, it definitely sounds like he was found in critical condition. He was found unresponsive. Okay, so unresponsive, taken to the hospital, hopefully rushed there on October 22nd, but his parents didn't find out for three days on October 25th. At this time, they were told by the warden of Staten Correctional Facility, who is Joseph Headley, they were told by Joseph Headley that he had overdosed. So that is what they mentally prepared themselves for, thinking he had gotten 
a batch of bad drugs. And it's unfortunate he did, chose to do drugs in there, but unfortunately those things happen. It's quite the shame. You know, it is what it is. You know, so we got to go say our, our peace and say our goodbyes. But it was really obvious upon arrival at the hospital that their son, Daniel, had not died of drug overdose or was not dying at that time of drug overdose. Uh, they said it was very clear that he was beaten and bruised and that it was very clear that his wrists had been tied up, that he had been bound. So it wasn't a drug overdose. Um, it just, imagine seeing that. You know, you go in to see your kid and you're thinking he died of a drug overdose, you know, he's going to look peaceful like he's just sleeping. I think there's going to be tubes in and out of him, but it's going to be like he, he's just sleeping. And you get there and he's beaten and bruised and swollen and marked up. He's unresponsive and he's got all these tubes hanging out of him, but it doesn't look like he's just sleeping. You can see that he's dying. His wrist bound. That's not normal. It's not like he was on the street and this happened while he was walking home at 2 in the morning from work. This didn't happen inside his home. This happened in a prison. Clearly, Daniel Williams made mistakes, but that is no excuse for allowing what happened to him to happen to him. And no parent should go expecting to see their child basically sleeping with tubes in him in a hospital bed to obviously looking at an assault victim. But little did they know just how bad this assault had gotten. When his mom saw him, she was quoted saying, And when we went to see him, he's beaten and bruised up. And you can tell where his hands were bound. I mean, you can tell it's obviously not a drug overdose. Of course, Warden Joseph Headley was contacted and confronted, as he should have been. His statement was, It's under investigation. And from there, he refused to tell them any more. Eventually, the family learned that he had been kidnapped, beaten, tortured, tied up, and raped for two to three days. He was rented out to other prisoners, uh, supposedly prisoners of a specific gang, though that is not guaranteed information at this time. Uh, and it was learned all of this by another prisoner. Prison sources added that this is common at this prison, at Staten, Staten Correctional Facility, this is common. It's not that this happens occasionally. Prison sources said this is common. Like, that word just... That's crazy to me. Like, I, it just... I don't... What do you mean it's common for prisoners to get kidnapped inside your prison for days? To go missing for days... And to be found bruised, beaten, swollen, cut up, and dying? Now, maybe the deaths aren't a common occurrence. Perhaps somebody just went too far. His body just wasn't able to handle it. Or maybe, unfortunately, Daniel Williams said something that he would regret. Such as that he would definitely be turning them in. That they're going down. That they're <clears throat> weirdos for what they're doing. And you know what? They are. They're sickos. They're weirdos. Whoever could do this to somebody. First of all, I'm sure there are men who act big and hard on the streets that act like, you know, they, they're only with women. How would your uh, your friends on the street, how would your, your family, how would your gang out on the streets feel if they knew that you were in there screwing a helpless, tied up young man? A man. You know, like, <laughs> it's just, how much of a man do you look like doing that? To somebody that's tied up. It's just, first off, you're just as bad as the sickos that go in there and get beat up or even killed for doing that to children on the streets or to women, even. People that do that to women, they also <laughs> get beat up all the time. But yet, you can be in prison and do it to another man, and it's okay. A 22 year old, by the way, this isn't like some hardened criminal this isn't some big grown man that's been through it and is never going to change this is a 22 year old this is a very young man and he, he looks young too in his photo like he just how would your you know your friends and your family look at you if they knew not only 
Or you imagine like you love women, you pull women, but you're actually screwing men. And on top of that, you're doing it in this sort of manner. I don't know. Just crazy to me. Of course, uh, the parents of Daniel Williams did get a lawyer. The father was quoted saying, we've got to stop this. If I can save a couple lives, you know, I'm thankful. Nothing is going to bring his son back. Obviously, he's very aware of that. Uh, you know, there's no way to, you know, look around that. But if he can do something to save one life, that would make a difference. And that's how I feel when I talk about things I've been through. Like, I know, like, it's really hard to talk about things I've been through. I know I have to call my out, myself out on some of these things. Some of these things are really embarrassing. Some of these things could change the way people look at me and treat me. But I feel like if I talk about these things that I've been through, even if it hurts me in whatever way, be that emotionally or physically or, you know, by the way people treat me, whatever, I feel like if I can change one person's life by talking about what I've been through so that they... A, don't make the same mistakes that I did, or B, if they already made that mistake so they don't handle it the way that I handle it. So they can go about things in a different way. I'll feel good about myself. Now, I will probably never know that by sharing these things that I share that somebody was able to make a better decision. I probably will never know that it affected somebody's life in, in a good way. But I can hope. And to me, that's enough to like talk about the things I plan on talking about on this channel. Even if, again, I'm going to be calling myself out on some of them, but... Anyways, his uh, parents did get a lawyer. I just want to reiterate that Daniel Williams was 22 years old. He was a very young guy. Um, he was in there for theft, I believe. It, it wasn't some crazy major crime. He, you know, he didn't kill anybody. He didn't assault, like sexually assault anybody. He didn't, you know, he didn't hurt children. Like, it's just crazy to me, you know, 14 days before his release, he's thinking about getting out, about seeing his two young children. He was a father of two kids who will never know him now. And while in the care of prison to do time for the crime he did knowingly commit, while under their care, their supervision, their protection, he was somehow kidnapped he was tied up, held hostage, tortured, beaten, bruised, and bloody, and raped multiple times as he was rented out to other inmates. On October 22nd, he was found unresponsive at the Stanton facility. On October 25th, three days later, his parents were alerted and went to go see him. And that was when they found it was not an overdose as they had been lied to or perhaps just misinformed by Warden Joseph Headley. On November 5th, his parents made the call to remove him from life support. He died four days later on November 9th. He will never watch his babies grow and his babies will never get to know him. Of course, Warden Joseph Headley was not available for comment. What a surprise. Um, it is unclear if any inmates have been charged at this time or what the prison is doing internally, if anything at all. Uh, that's my own comment. Um, it's just, it's obvious that the Staten Correctional Facility needs serious reform. Not only did their warden blatantly lie, but it took days to alert a family that their child had been found dying. Like, and that he was dying in the hospital. There's no way you just, you didn't know their information. It just doesn't, it, well, I'm speculating at this current point, okay? These are not going to be facts. This is me speculating. These are my opinions. It's just me blab mouth and what I feel and think at this moment. I just personally wonder, did Joseph Headley, the warden, did he blatantly lie so that he would have time to hide evidence? Did he blatantly wait, negligently wait, to tell the parents of this dying young man so that again he had time to hide evidence, so that he had time to wrangle the people up, so he had time to get the story straight because it what just doesn't what doesn't add up for me is he, this kid he's in prison right 
and I shouldn't call him a kid, I know, he's, he's 22, but, I mean, mentally, he's still probably a child, he has so much to see, so much to do, so much to learn, he has so much that he could give this world, and he has no chance to do that, because while he was in prison, where he should be relatively safe, of course things happen in prison, you are around a bunch of, unfortunately, not particularly stable people, a lot of angry people, a lot of violent people, just a lot of mentally ill people, Accidents happen, but this is way beyond an accident. When you are in jail or prison, there are routine searches to see where people are. So multiple times a day, multiple times a night especially, someone goes around and it is their job to mark off that each inmate is still there in the pod in the area they need to be in. So that means either number one, Daniel Williams had been seen multiple times, injured, tied up, or at the very least with the marks and bruises on him, clearly injured, and it was just let go. Or he hadn't been seen in days. Now, if he hadn't been seen in days, what does that mean? That means either the staff knew he wasn't there and didn't say a word because either they knew where he was, they knew what was going on, and they were allowing it for whatever reason, financial compensation, drugs, uh, whatever. Or the officers didn't know, they alerted the proper people, which would go up to Joseph Headley, I would assume, the warden, and they were told not to worry about it and were lied to about where he was and why he wasn't in his cell and that it was okay, don't worry about it. We know where he's at. I personally, this is a personal opinion, I am speculating. Personally, I feel someone in that prison had to know. And I don't mean other inmates. Obviously, inmates knew because they were part of it. I'm talking staff. I cannot comprehend with how a prison or a jail works that no staff member would know what was going on. For this to be able to happen over the course of days. For this inmate to be missing for days. For him to not be head counted for days. Multiple times. Multiple times. It's not like they do one count per day. They do several in the night alone. Let alone during the day. And mind you, when they do these head counts, they're supposed to put a light in and make sure they can see you. So if he had marks and bruises on his face, let's say he had the blanket up to his chin. First off, most prisons, you're not allowed to do that for safety reasons. So nobody told him to pull it down to see what was going on and noticing that was suspicious against protocol. So that means that officer failed right there by not checking on him. Or they saw the marks on him but did nothing about it. Now let's say he was injured and, jo and uh, Daniel Williams was too scared to speak because... Perhaps the person in his cell or in the cell next to him were the people involved in doing this to him. Then yes, of course it is possible that he was scared. And that's a shame because when a person walked by, he could have easily said something. But I feel like if he was in his cell at night, if somehow they managed to put him back, get him all cleaned up, and were comfortable he wouldn't say anything, why? Why were they so comfortable he wouldn't say anything? It makes me think, again that staff had to know what was going on. And perhaps Daniel Williams witnessed staff come in. Perhaps staff are part of who did what they did to him. And again, I am speculating. I have no proof that the warden is involved. I have no proof that any of the staff members or that the correction off correctional officers, COs, I have no proof that any of them are involved. I do not. I'm just thinking out loud because it just doesn't make sense to me. My head is reeling with how this could possibly happen, how somebody could go missing in jail for days. And this is somebody who's already been there for a while. His face is known. Those correction officers, they're good at their job at remembering people. Um, it's the same with if you go to a hospital, people start memorizing your face. If you go to a detox or a rehab, people memorize your face. And it, it takes just a couple days to do it because they have to see you so many times because they have to do their checks so many times. So they see you so many times. There's just no way he went missing for a few days and, and just it, it went under the radar for days on end. It just doesn't make sense. And for a prison source or sources, it was plural, 
to say that this is a common occurrence at this prison, it just, if it's a common occurrence, I just don't see how staff couldn't be a part of it. And I feel like the state or somebody, somebody needs to go in there and there has to be a total clean out in there. That place has to be under total reform. Maybe even shut the freaking place down. If there's something like this and you're told this happens often, that prisoners are kidnapped from their cells, put in other cells for days on end, beaten and tortured and rented out as sex slaves to other people for that to be common like i am like so infuriated i'm not sure it looks obvious that i'm angry but i am i am so angry by that that this is possible look at other countries their prisons aren't like this in our in our prisons we are here to throw you in and then throw you back out and see you again later because we probably will because our relapse rate is so freaking high that's because other countries they're doing it right, and it, it proves they're doing it right. There's, there's no reason for us to not do what they're doing, like places in, in, in the Netherlands or in, in Germany, like all these other countries in Europe, the UK, the way they do things is they reform you. You go in, you can take classes for woodwork or to be a mechanic or you can do electrical or plumbing, animal care, dog training, all these crazy things. And yet we have some programs here and there, but not like other countries where you actually go to these classes and get a certificate or a license so you can get out and get a job doing it. And they sometimes help you find a company that will accept you as a felon or an ex-inmate. Um, they, they have counseling. They have drug courses. They have private therapy. They have psychiatrists. They get you on proper medication, not the cheap crap that's like the throwaways that you don't usually use on people unless they're inmates like we do here in America. Also, they eat very healthy. Um, they have them cooking real food. They have access usually, or some of them, have access to their own kitchen in their pod. So they don't have to just only eat the two or three meals you get given. They can eat stuff in between, like cups and noodles and stuff. They're allowed in and out of their room. It's more of like, like a lockdown roommate situation, you know? It's not like a prison. And I know we're all thinking, oh, well, we don't want to be all cushion happy and just like, oh, I might as well just go to prison. It's real nice in there. It's not like that, though. They don't just throw anybody in there. So it's not like a homeless person can go do something and automatically they get to go there. No, they'll be like, dude, we can see that you're trying to get in here. We're going to put you in a mental ward instead. And that's not as cushy, you know what I mean? That's not where you want to go. So there's ways around it. And what's, I think, a big problem is a lot of our prisons are private. As in, you get to run it the way you want to. You get to create it the way you want to. You get to make money and profit off it. And I think that's crazy. Prisons need to be reformed here in America. And I don't know if it needs to be a state-by-state -state process, but somehow I, I think the whole private thing is bullshit. I don't think that it's ever going to work. I don't think that's okay. I think that needs to change 100%. But on top of that, we need to do something. People need to fight harder. We need to stop this BS from happening. This should be unheard of in prisons or you know a once in a 10 year span sort of thing we need to work on reform we need to stop throwing people in there like they're trash and then dragging them back out like they're still trash to throw them back in there in a year or two that needs to stop there it's just i don't know things have to get done and I, I wish there were more people that were really passionate about this like i'm super passionate about this i would fight my ass up i would organize events for this i would do friendly protests about this i would create petitions and advertise petitions for this i really would if i had somebody to help me if i had some backing if i had some support like i would genuinely fight for this because this is something i really believe in like when i had my state certified rescue I was always planning on getting land and starting rescue and it's something my father and i talked about after he got an inheritance unfortunately he passed away uh, pretty much right after. So that didn't work. Um, <clears throat> but we talked about going to the East Coast, getting land, and reopening the rescue bigger than ever before. And I always, from the jump, started thinking our employees are going to be people on parole. Kind of like the whole pitbulls and parolees thing, you know? Um, those are the people I want. I want the people that need a second chance. I want the people on parole and the ex-felons because, yes, while that does come with some baggage, yes, that comes with some difficulties, those people tend to be the hardest working, most awesome people to be around. They tend to be very genuine. They tend to be very honest. Um, and it's funny you hear that because you're probably thinking, like, other oh, prisoners are definitely not honest. And, yes, they, of course, they have their addictions. They have their issues. They have their faults. We all do. But these are people that genuinely deserve a second chance. And if they're willing to put in the work for that second chance, I don't see why they don't deserve it. And you can get some of the 
most genuine, hardworking, appreciative people you can ever meet in your life because you're giving them a chance when no one else would. Not only that, they get to work around animals, which has just been proven to help mentally. <clears throat> and then on top of that, you also get to have these people that are damaged, that have been tossed away, that have been abused and neglected and unwanted. And they get to work with these animals that have gone through the exact same thing. And you get this broken animal and this broken human, you put them together and it's this beautiful thing. And I would love to do that. And to this day, I still want to do that. That is still a goal of mine. I still really want to get land and I still want to focus on having a rescue and I want my animals to be rescued animals. I want to have cows, but I want them to be rescued from farms that neglected them or abused them or cows that are meant to go to slaughter, you know, things like that. Like I want to be able to help those animals. I'm not anti-slaughter. I am not vegetarian. I'm definitely not vegan, but I do believe in humane slaughter. I think that is also something we need to push for. There's just so much stuff that we could do differently and we just really need people that are willing to fight for it, willing to voice it, willing to show yo, we're passionate about this and we want this change and we've drawn out how this change is possible. We've drawn out how you can get the funds. We've drawn out how you can do this, this and that and how you can stop this. And, you know, th there's a way to do it. But the problem is people don't want to put in the effort. They don't want to fight. And that drives me nuts. So, I don't know. That's it. That's my rant. I just wanted everyone to know what's going on with Daniel Williams because I feel like his name needs to be out there more. I feel like people need to know that this happened to him. I think he deserves that. And I really hope his parents get something out of this. And, and I know nothing will ever change the fact that their child is dead. It doesn't change the fact that their grandchildren will never know their father. Um, nothing's going to take that pain away. But like his father said, if he can save somebody, that... That should be all that matters. And I, I genuinely hope something happens at this prison to, to fix things. And I hope the right people get in trouble for it. It really is sad that it had to come to this. That a very young person had to lose their life. And in such a sick, agonizing, slow way. Like that's just... Humans are disgusting, vile things sometimes. And it is such a shame that those people exist among the good people. And this is another way that prisons need to be reformed so that these sickos aren't mixed in with the people who just made a mistake. Because sometimes that's what their sentence is for, is for making a mistake. Yes, they knowingly made the mistake, but that doesn't mean they're a bad person. And it just, we need reform. We need people to fight. And I'm one of those people. I just need someone else that is also willing to fight. Because this is just... This isn't okay. And my heart goes out to Daniel Williams. It goes out to his family, his parents, his children, his friends, anyone and everyone involved in this in a way that's personal. I really do genuinely feel for you because this is just, this is just awful. And I, again, I, I feel for you. I'm so sorry that you're going through this. I want you also to know that I did this video in hopefully good taste. Um, it was just something that really upset me. I, I, I I obviously don't know this person personally. It's just this is something that, yeah, it really upset me for multiple reasons. And so I don't, if, if the family or friends see this, I don't want them to think I did this in, in, in bad taste. I, I don't want you to, you know, um, think anything like that for it. I just really want you to know that there are people that see this and are genuinely outraged and genuinely upset and just are just praying and hoping for the best for you um, and for the outcome of Daniel Williams so that he didn't die in vain, hopefully. You know, unfortunately, what happened to him has already happened. So hopefully some good can come of it. And um, that's it. Uh, I'm not going to do a big, big outro. I'm just going to say, of course, to um, please like, please leave a comment, a positive comment, please. Um, and please subscribe if you're interested in these type of videos or if you're interested in me reviewing different things. I've, I've got a lot of content coming out very soon. So please take a look and um, please follow this new channel. If you're interested in my toy content, you can check that out on my other channel. It is, of course, linked in the description below. I don't know why I pointed that direction. So please make sure you subscribe. It helps me out so much. I really want to start growing this channel and uh, hopefully this, uh, that's a possibility. All right, guys. Thank you so much for watching. And as always, have a great day. Goodbye.